Our guest today is Hossein Uzair, the man behind the story. Welcome, Mr. Uzair. Thank you. According to my research, you were born in the village of Rashadia, Tokat. Right. Your parents were divorced and they sent you to Erba when you were seven. Right. Why did they send you to Erba? Nobody wanted me. So my grandmother gave me to a landowner who had animals. She said, he will take care of the animals and live here. I was an unwanted child. My parents didn't want me because of arguments. Were you sold with the animals? I don't know if I was sold, but my grandmother said those words. So the man asked what I would eat, and my grandmother said, give him some bread and yogurt, he'll eat it. Did you work there just for food? Absolutely. Did you take some money? No, absolutely no money. You were just seven. I'd never seen money before. Why didn't they send you to school? I went to school for just three days, and then my father changed his mind. I was going to school in the town of Rashadia. Three days before school, my father changed his mind. My stepmother didn't allow me to go to school, and then he said, I don't have a child like you. And my mother resented him, so I was left all alone. So in a way, your stepmother sent you away to get rid of you. I was already staying with my uncle or grandpa. My mother was married and my father returned to his old wife. You were left homeless. I had a place to live, but have you never gone to school in your whole life? No. So how did you learn to read and write? When I was a shepherd, I wrote in the snow with a stick. There was a shepherd called Jalal Emi, and he knew how to read and write. He taught me. You did this also by yourself? Yes, of course. I was writing on walls with a stone in the snow or dust with a stick, and I was writing on walls with coal. You came to Ankara when you were 11 years old. Were you in fact sent to Ankara? Let me tell you the reason why I was sent to Ankara before you ask. My mother was very upset because I was disowned. I was an illegitimate child, so her husband bought me a ticket. I went to Ankara to earn some money in order to kill my own father. I went to Ankara to earn money to buy a gun. In order to kill your father. My mother told me to. I was going to do it. Everyone was saying the same thing. All my friends in Ankara said the same thing. Did they tell you that you must definitely kill your father? This is the only way. I must shoot him. And so I went there to shoot him, to earn money. So what did you do in Ankara? Where did you work? I couldn't work in Ankara. Nobody gave me a job because I was too young. Where did you sleep? I sold petrol and flint at Ulus. There was a toilet in Suhia. I slept in that toilet. You slept in a toilet? Yes, it was very nice. I had a place to sleep. I was thankful for that toilet. What were you earning per day? I was making 75 kurus per day and I had made a deal with an offal butcher. I was eating one liver sandwich every 24 hours. It was enough for me. I couldn't buy meatballs because it was one lira. Of course, the suggestion that you should kill your father was absolutely wrong, illegal and inhuman, wasn't it? I already knew that, but they were telling me that I wouldn't be punished. Was it because you were a child? Yes, they were saying that because I was a child, I wouldn't be punished. How did you avoid that chaos? How did the thought of shooting your father disappear? Before the shooting thought, my stepmother poisoned me when I was at the village. Why? My brother put the poison inside a fig because I had to die. Unbelievable. That's why I knew there were problems. Actually, the day I ate that fig, I told the other children, I didn't eat the fig. I threw it away. It was a feast for me. I thought that it was a good thing for me to be poisoned because I didn't have anything to eat that day. It was Ramadan and I was a child. Children were not fasting. All my friends opened their pack. You can't imagine how great the meal was that day. Actually, the day I was poisoned was a very happy day for me. Okay, so you worked in Ankara, I think. Later on, you earned some more money because you had discovered life. To communicate with people changed the way you think, and you decided to learn English, isn't it? Right. I decided to learn English when I was in a coal cellar in Izmet Pasha because I was working at a bar. Someone gave me a job at a bar. What were you doing in a coal hole? I went there to rent a room. I thought that I was rich. 
There was money in my pocket. It was the first time I had money. A lady told me that with that amount of money, I could only rent a coal hole. Now I know that she was making fun of me. But I rented that coal hole. We carried the junk out and the lady gave me a few lamps. All the decisions of my life were made in that room. And of course, I learned English because there was a bed and a lamp. Who taught you English? I decided to learn English at that time. I became Muslim. I bought Quran language books because I was going to bookstores and they were telling me to choose a book. I didn't know how to choose a book. And then I found parts of the Quran on the streets. I'm a good Muslim, a good Turk, but I was confused. Why a good Turk? Why a good Muslim? There was no one better than us. I wondered if rocks were falling on other people's heads. I had to know, so I had to learn English. Who taught you English? I was a footboy. I found a teacher, a retired colonel. Yes, he was giving me lessons twice a week. I guess he was one of your customers. I don't remember who he was. It's in the past. Did you do your military duty? Yes, I did. You did your military duty when My you were young. My was recorded incorrectly, or perhaps right, I don't know. My father registered it like that. He once loved me, I How guess. How old were you when you went to England? 21. How did you get there? I went by coach. I joined the other student. Flight tickets were very expensive. Was it a return ticket? No. A one-way ticket. Was it all you could give? That's all the money I had. So you went to London and began working in a restaurant. Has your life changed? Has the quality of your life changed in London? When I was in London? Or did you still sleep in the toilets? Well, in the beginning, I found a job in a kebab house, which was closed one day a week. I was sleeping in the basement. A few weeks passed by that way. I was bathing in the toilet. You were bathing in a toilet once again. It was my luck. When did you open your first restaurant? I opened my first restaurant three or four years after I came to London. So, did all your suffering end when you opened your first restaurant? Did you begin to say, oh, this is the end of my bad days. After everything, things will be fine. Yes, I said just that. I opened a kebab house with a partner. It was not a restaurant. Besides that, I opened a restaurant in another place. I bought the restaurant that I had worked at before. My boss and I were working with arguments, and when I left the job, it was closed. I had money, and the bank also helped me. So, I bought the restaurant. There was always a queue at the shop in Mayfair, and I used to serve Turkish wine to the customers who were waiting in the queue. For 30 years, this place had been full, so there was always a queue in front of the place. Did you face any special difficulties specific to England? The entire problem began then. What was that? Misery. The things that you mentioned never upset me because I had a good life, I had a good job. But when there was a line in front of the restaurant in England, the misery began. A big trouble. That line must have made you happy. Somebody was taking money from me. Protection money? Of course. The big problem began there. From that day, my troubles never ended. Protection money for the Mafia? Yes, of course. What had the Mafia done? Playing with my staff, because I was not afraid. There was no use in being afraid. If it would have been a solution, I would have been afraid of them. They were threatening the staff, and the staff was poisoning the customers. They poisoned the customers? Of course. I had trouble with my customers, and then my staff became their men. They told me that I was not able to enter my own restaurant. Restaurants increased. For example, they were saying, he cannot enter that place. And so you overcame those problems, and you still do. You've become the owner of a chain of seven restaurants. According to the Discovery Channel's research, you now own $60 million. You have aristocratic friends, you ride horses, play golf, go hunting, you own a Ferrari, you're living in a luxury neighborhood. Now, have you achieved all your goal? Never. What is it? You have a place on the world's richest people program? Productivity is happiness. I like to read. I like to make friends. I love the world. It's a nice world. I want to find my peace in this world. What are you planning to do next? To live a better life, to be more useful to people, to represent my country better. About my documentary, I've asked them over and over why they chose me. They told me plenty of times, you are the brand of Turkey. A brand represents Turkey in London. Yes, thank God we stopped serving kebab. Would you think about doing something about homeless children? 
I am helping to educate children. I am helping them when they're very young. Everyone is beginning when they're at high school or university. My only luxury is helping to educate children. Because when I was a child, I worked, earned money and bought land. Then I sold that land and I opened a foundation. People open foundations after they've gotten rich in order not to pay taxes. You have a foundation? This is my luxury. Did you start the foundation to educate children? Yes, I sold my land to open that foundation. Congratulations. My first aim is to help educate children. Please, whatever happens, continue what you're doing. I hope this dream will come true and that you will help as many children as you can. This is my wish. I hope my wishes come true and I can be useful. It will come true. I hope I can represent Turkey better abroad. I want to educate more children. I'm working hard at doing more useful things. Thank you very much. I thank you. I wish you all a pleasant evening. Good night.